Objection. Objection! Hello everybody, welcome to Video Games Awesome Live. This is Trials and Tribulation, the trial of Mask to Mask. But who's the true defendant here? Who is Mask to Mask? I don't the defendant know. is technically Ron D. Light. Um, the little, uh, what do you want to call him? <laughs> is sissy no, an offensive term? I think it's actually the true term. Or he's a pussy. He's pusillanimous. Ah. Not one, two, that's the root word. Yeah. Pusillanimous. He doesn't, Jesus, there's a lot of sunshine coming in today. Whoa. We could be out there enjoying that, but instead we're inside playing Phoenix Wright. Oh, <laughs> oh you had to let your hair down? Yeah. Um, oh yeah, Becky's going to be controlling most of the stuff today because I have to do the Godot voice, which requires two hands because of the ability to go up and down the octave. And if I don't have two hands, I can't go like this and then all the way up here like this. All right. <laughs> so, let's begin. All right. All right, so it's uh, Gumshoe's testimony right now. Master Mask is a master thief that first started his crime spree six months ago. He's so confident that he sends his calling card before even he even commits a crime. Oh yeah, and I just remembered he always does it on a full moon. Does it only a full moon? Yeah. This was his fifth heist, and as usual, he sent a card up to the Lordly Tailor. His pattern is his pattern is to always go after only the most precious art pieces. That's why we were sure it was Master Mask, sir. It fits his M.O. to a T. I don't even know what that to a T means. I forgot the jazz hands. Oh! God damn it. Wait, for the first time he said Master Mask? Yeah. That's okay because we'd already said it on a, that was a repeated line. Okay. So technically you haven't missed one yet. So it's okay. Be you. They forgive me. Thank you. Excuse me while I have a little bit of my starter fluid. <laughs> starter fluid! Best present ever. Thank you, Mama. Gifts from the mother-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Everybody loves that mat. Or that, uh... That mug? mug. <laughs> All right. Hmm! So then, the actual identity of this mask and mask, I do like the idea of the judge doing it, <laughs> is... M Mr. Godot, is you? <laughs> there it is. It's first <sighs> Well, we're in the middle of a trial here, Mr. Godot. I was gonna do a thing where I had coffee every time. He had that coffee? he had coffee. Whew. Isn't that going to be a lot of coffee? You know what? No way I can do it. Yeah. No, I would be jittering off the couch by the end. <laughs> You'll see. Okay. All right. Blacker than a moonless night, hotter than, more bitter than hell itself. That is coffee. I am sure you can grant me at least this much, Your Honor. Oh, please, proceed. <laughs> Very well. It's only coffee, after all. <laughs> <laughs> what? You can't be letting him slide this early in the trial. <laughs> Proceed with your cross-examination, Mr. Wright. Bionic, what are you going to do? As long as they haven't brought up Mr. Delight's identity, all we can do is show that it wasn't Mask to Mask who stole the urn. So, Phoenix's strategy going forward is not to disprove that Ron Delight is Master Mask, but just to disprove that Master Mask did this at all. Yeah. Which, um, if we're going purely by the persona, it's probably wrong. I, I don't think you can even do that. We have a picture of him. <laughs> we have a picture of him doing it. Yeah. And we, the player, saw the cutscene in which Master Mask stole it. So regardless of who was behind the mask, yeah. Phoenix mask is already mask down the wrong path. It. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing he can do about this. All right. So, Mask to Mask is the master thief. First started his crime spree six months ago. Go back. Oh, oops, I feel... <laughs> it's the trigger. Minus? You'll get used to this. It's the trigger. To go backwards? Trigger, yeah. Oh, okay. There you go. So press on that. How? <laughs> oh, <The> minus. minus. <laughs> Hold it! 
Have you been involved in the investigation from the beginning? Yup. Nobody knows more about the thief than me, pal. Wait a minute. It's true. I am a Zvari author on thieves. <laughs> He's mm. just trying to be an ace detective yeah. now. He wants to be at me. So even though he's been angry about at me, he actually wishes he was. Yeah. <laughs> Poor guy. An author? He's written books about thieves? Um, I think he probably meant to say an authority. <laughs> the fact that this guy can slip through even my fingers shows how good he is, pal. <laughs> It's easy when those fingers happen to be butter fingers. Oh, butter fingers. Press it harder, I guess. Yeah. Okay. So nobody knows more about the thief than you, huh? You got it, pal. Except maybe for the thief's mom, that is. <laughs> oh my god, Gumshoe, you're adorable. Yeah. But isn't there someone who knows even more about him than the police? You don't mean... Detective Svari, do you? Hmm, who is this person, Svari? He sounds German. <laughs> His name is Luke Atme, sir. I guess I shouldn't have made up such a silly name for him. <laughs> what the heck? I guess he's not all that famous after all. <laughs> huh? Oh, he thinks that he... Okay, never mind. The judge thought that his name was Zavari. Oh, I get it. okay. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, it's true that he did manage to retrieve. Wait a second. Wait a second. Isn't Zavari Zavari? Is that not a An French word? I think it's a French word. And if it is a French word, then the judge is of the same mind and theory as I am that the French and Germans are the same. <laughs> As well as the Japanese and the French? It's actually Japanese. Zvari is made up. Zvari sounds more German than French. It's a nonsense word, corruption of Japanese. It sounds like it could have been huh. a, a French ex, a French word. Especially when you say it like, Zvari? All right, cool. <laughs> I don't oh. know if I read that. <laughs> I don't think I read that. Okay. Oh. <laughs> yeah, just take it easy. Oh, I see. It seems you're not the expert you claim to be. Ugh. It, it looks like the thief is playing with me, even now. <laughs> so confident that he sends a calling card before he even commits the crime. Press. Hold it! Hold it! Have you seen all of these so-called calling cards? Of course I have, except the person in charge of the treasure exhibit never brought their card to the police. Andrews, because she gave it to Luke at me. Oh yeah, she didn't want to involve the police. Yeah. So I didn't see this one until after the crime occurred. That's because Detective at me stopped Miss Andrews from taking it to the police. Oh, he was the, oh, I see, I didn't remember that. Was the calling card that Lord Taylor received authentic? Because um, she hired Luke at, Luke me, at me as a preemptive strike. Yeah, 20 days before, I think. Well, all the cards have one common identifying feature. But we're not releasing that information to the general public. But you're absolutely certain that this card is real. Gumshoe can't say it out loud, but I bet he's talking about Mask, the Mask's emblem. <laughs> this was his fifth heist, and as usual, he sent a card to the Lordly Tailor. All right. Hold it! His fifth heist, and your fifth screw-up, huh? <laughs> oh, man, yeah. Phoenix. Just gonna say that about a guy you go to burger for burgers with? <laughs> Objection, pal! That ain't fair! Maybe you could say I screwed up four times. <laughs> but this last time wasn't my fault. I didn't know about the calling card this time. Oh my god, you're so cute. You of all people shouldn't be chuckling about <laughs> this, Detective Gumshoe. I just want everyone here in the courtroom to know something. If you ever get a calling card from this guy, 
Don't call some stupid private eye. Call your local police right away. Got me. Wow, it looks like he's really got thing for Detective at me. This pattern is to always go after the most precious art pieces. Hold it! Hold it! Art pieces! Like what, for example? Well, his first target was the famous Tear of Eminon. What's that? Some kind of especially salty teardrop? Jesus Christ, Judge. <laughs> no, no, sure, it's a blue diamond. <laughs> a single whale diamond. Next was the crown of Bongora. You know, the thing that you put on your head. Then it was the left hand of Hades. And then the portrait of Maginina, sir. Detective Atme returned. Detective Atme retrieved the portrait of Maginina and returned it to the museum. And the target of this fifth and last robbery was the sacred urn, right? But isn't it difficult for him to dispose of such famous art pieces? Well, we assume it must have had some underworld connections. Somehow Mr. Delight doesn't... Somehow Mr. Delight doesn't look the type. Yeah, he's a little too sunny to be hanging around with the underworld. That's why we were sure it was Master Mask, sir. It fits his M.O. to a T. Hold it! Hold it! What do you mean when you say it fits his M.O. to a T? <laughs> Fuck. I was thinking of asking the same thing myself! A judge doesn't know what modus operandi is. <laughs> wow. Ugh. I wish I could... I wish you would only listen to more closely, pal. First of all, there's a calling card. Well, 100% it's authentic. Then there's the fact that he seems to know all about the security system. Huh. There is all that stuff with the security system. Like, Ronnie does know the security system, right? Because he worked at... Oh, security? security system. Uh-oh. Yeah, that's not good. No. And finally, his target was an art piece. <laughs> These are all parts of the Thief's modus operandi. <laughs> I don't even know what it means. <laughs> and so, since this robbery seems to fit all those conditions... That's right! I mean, it means that Mask, the Mask, is behind it. Wait, it definitely looks like it was Mask, the Mask, who stole the urn. But there's no real evidence either way as to whether Ron Delight is Mask Damask. But, but the... Also, the urn hasn't turned up yet, let alone in connection to Mr. Delight himself. So even though we know it was Mask and Damask, it did it! Maybe for the time being, I should try to show it wasn't Mask Damask that did it. Even though it was. Yeah. Alright, so, <gasps> so we are not, okay, go, th can I see this? Yeah. He was confident, sounds like, uh, okay, the main thing that I remember somewhere in there, Gumshoe saying, was that he only goes after the most valuable, right there, right? There, yeah, right? And, and the sacred urn is only valuable to the people at Curian Village. Yeah, so... So should we try to go down that road right now? The thing is, this statement doesn't say that the urn was valuable. Kind of does. Do you want to look at our evidence? Yeah. How do you get to that? You press plus. Okay. All right. What we got here is a publicity photo of Master Mask. Doesn't really do anything. We'll probably come into play later when we have to say like what he looks like. Oh yeah, and the blackmail letter. Key card. Oh shit! Uh, Your Honor, what do you think about the witness's statement? Uh, I'm not sure I follow you. It's clearly, er, contradicts the, um, I thought... <laughs> you don't sound very sure, Mr. Wright. Objection overruled. Fuck me. <laughs> I don't think that won me any points with the judge. That sounds like a carbon copy of, like, Phoenix's first ever failure. Um... Might be. All right, so what we're wanting to do is just basically, like, does the sacred urn have any details? There we go. I don't know, 
We should just present Supposedly this. priceless, yeah. Yeah, yes. so, all right, here we go. Is it an objection? It's an objection. Yes. All right, uh, yeah. Should we take a break? Yeah, we're gonna okay. take a break. When we come back, we will object to this wholeheartedly yes, and with extreme prejudice. Stay tuned as Trials and Tribulations continues on Video Games Awesome.